I want to welcome each one of you, my brothers and sisters, for our weekly Bible study. This is on the sixth Sabbath school lesson study. I welcome each one of you. God has been so gracious to us. He granted us this special privilege to continue to study God's word. And in his loving kindness, he kept each one of us safe, provided all of our needs during the last month, July. He brought us into this new month. August, God is so gracious to us. We have a number of challenges, including to face that uh, possible third wave. But God is with us. He will take care of us. So we will plead for his grace and his mercy. Let's pray before we open God's word to learn. Loving Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness towards each one of us granting us this month that what all the challenges we have to face, we do not know. But by your grace, with your helping hand, we can go through any situation because you have showed your mercy in the last month for each one of us and provided all of our spiritual as well as physical needs. Lord, we want to thank you. Take care of all of our spiritual needs and physical needs throughout this month also. Whatever the challenges are ahead of us, Lord, take care of us and lead us. With your help, we have nothing to worry. Thank you, Jesus. Take care of us because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to... Thank you for upholding me and my daughter in uh, your personal prayers. Thank you for sharing this message with many of your friends and colleagues and your family members. Continue to share our YouTube channel, Professor Sharad Babu, uh, with others so that they can also subscribe and be blessed. This week's uh, lesson study the title is Finding Rest in Family Ties. Finding Rest in Family Ties. Do we have any problem with uh, family ties? Do we face some restlessness? Do we face challenges in our family ties? We cannot help but say, yes, we have a number of challenges in our family ties, which are causing restlessness to each one of us. That's why, how to find rest? This is what is our focus today in this week's lesson study. Our memory text comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. We are admonished by saying, don't do the error like the wicked people. Wicked people fall into error because they don't follow the word of God as a light to their path and light to their uh, journey in this world, the spiritual journey we are talking about. But we are told by God's grace, we have to grow and we have to walk in that grace. That's why we need to avoid all kinds of worldly things and the error in the sight of God that is error. If we don't follow God's word and his commandments, surely we are falling into the error of the wicked people. We need to be cautious. But in this world, our family ties are very strong, uh, especially whichever culture we live in and Eastern culture, the culture in India. We have very, very strong family relationships. And uh, people cannot really live outside the family structure. But we look at the world. And from the point of God's word, family ties have so much of a heartbreaking situations. Because in the beginning, before even sin entered this world, God established family 
and also the Sabbath. Satan has chosen both, which God established before sin entered this world. Satan started attacking from the beginning. That's why Satan started doing all of that aspects which are against God to bring in the lives of faithful people. The first family, Adam and Eve, both brothers, Cain and Abel, all of us know how Satan brought so much of a bitterness in the family because Cain killed his younger brother. What was the cause? Is there any worthy cause to kill his own brother? No. Just he told, why not you obey God? That's all. And his real anger was on God. Why God did not accept my sacrifice? But he took that anger or revenge on his own brother. So he became a murderer. But after murdering his uh, own brother, then what was his condition? God cursed him, saying, you will be a vagabond, which means not having any settled life, a nomadic life. So he had that restlessness throughout his lifetime because he did not come to God. He did not confess his sin. So the problems in our human relationships, especially family ties, do, are causing, are caused in the olden days and even now, uh, it's going on because of the lack of love. We are talking about that brotherly love and filio, and also lack of that godly love. In Greek, we call agape. That's why lack of that brotherly love, lack of that godly love, agape, it opens the door for a number of problems in our family relationships. We can uh, experience that one in the life of Abraham also. When God called him, he obeyed such a faithful person, father of faith. But when he took the advice of his own wife, Sarah, and took Hagar to be or to bear a son. Now, these days we call surrogate mother. But uh, those days in the community, in the society, if the wife of the rich man has no children for some reason, from some health condition, and if she cannot bear children, the society in those days permitted her servant to bear children for her, which means she can be taken with the permission of the husband, with the permission of the wife. So in fact, it was Sarah, it was Sarah who suggested, now take my maidservant, Hagar, so that we can have children. So that child will be my child. This was the now order of that time. But later, it brought so much of a restlessness in the family. And there was a struggle between Sarah and Hagar later. And also there was a struggle between Ishmael and the promised son Isaac. Could not get along. That brought so much of a pain to Abraham, so much of a restlessness in his life. And also we notice in the life of uh, Isaac, when he got married to Rebecca, after uh, many years of waiting, they had twin boys, Esau 
and Jacob. All of us know in Genesis chapter 27 and 28, they could not get along. They could not get along. And Jacob wanted the inheritance or heritage of uh, his brother. Because being the firstborn, he had some privileges. And he wanted that just for a meal, just for offering a meal. Can you imagine that selfishness for upper hand, for me, maybe for a special blessings or from uh, some extra property which may come to the firstborn? There is selfishness among the brothers. That led him to more serious aspect. It was the mother, that was Rebecca, who planned, plotted to deceive her own husband, Isaac, who was in advanced age. Probably he had a dim eyesight in his old age. He could not see properly. He could not identify who is who. So she planned, she plotted everything. It was not the plan of Jacob to deceive his father. But he cooperated. Maybe we have to learn a lesson. Often the serious problems, restlessness comes in families because somebody has some selfish interest and others cooperate or join in that plot. My brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, are you also cooperating with some plot, some plan? to bring some discord in the family because of that cooperation which he extended to his uh, mother and cheated his father. That brought a, a separation from uh, that loving mother and loving son. He had to run for his life, flee from his brother, and he went away. And mother advised, flee to the house of my brother who is far away in Syria. And the uh, Bible tells us, Jacob, who loved his mother so much, he could not stay with his mother. He could not come back to see her at any time. In his absence, when he was there with the house of Laban, she died. He did not even know that. Can you imagine that uh, situation so-called separation all because there was discord in the family. This is what we call dysfunctional families or families which are not united with the love of God. They're not united. They're dysfunctional. They, are dis they have disunity among the families. What about your family? Do you find rest? in your family ties. And also in the life of uh, Jacob, he married two sisters in a strange manner, Leah and Rachel. And Leah and Rachel, both sisters, they could not get along. Can you imagine? They could not get along, both sisters. And also, his two concubines, altogether four women. And Jacob had a, so much of tough time, restlessness in his life because each had competition to win his favor to, by having more children. So he ended up having 12 children, 12 sons and one daughter. But 12 sons, they also could not get along. And especially the first 10 were against Joseph. The first 10 sons, they had all sorts of a wicked character and uh, bad habits. And when uh, Joseph reported to his father their wrongdoing and they developed so much of uh, anger that uh, grudge on him. On top of that, he told that 
two dreams which he had. One dream and uh, there are 12 sheaves and uh, uh, his uh, sheaf that is, uh, now these days we are not acquainted with the farming community. Uh, after harvesting, they will uh, just uh, leave a bundle of uh, that harvested uh, now wheat or uh, paddy or corn uh, for a few days to dry in the farm, in the sun. That's what uh, uh, they call sheep. And that sheep stood up, all the other leaven bowing down, he said. They understood and said, you mean to say you are going to be somebody, a ruler? We have to come and bow down to you. So they took it so negatively. Another time he had, I had another dream. Now this time, 12 stars and sun and moon and all of them bowing down to me. <coughs> that means <coughs> that one star. When, Jos uh, when uh, Joseph told this one, his own father, Jacob, was upset and said, son, what is this kind of a dream? You mean to say your uh, uh, father, that is uh, himself and mother and all the brothers are going to bow down to you, are going to become some uh, ruler or what? Don't have such kind of a dream, kind of uh, warned him. But Joseph was very humble and very faithful and obedient son. That's why his father Jacob bought him a coat of colors, uh, multicolor, if you want to call that way. Very attractive looking. Why did he do that? And that brought more jealousy because of his two dreams and the special coat of many colors brought so much jealousy among the brothers, especially so much jealousy on him. Why daddy had to buy such a colorful coat? Maybe what Jacob did sometimes, we may say he had done something wrong. He shouldn't have bought a, uh, that kind of a colorful coat to him. If he wanted to buy, he should have bought for every son. But maybe, sure, one of these days, soon we will meet Jacob in heaven. We will ask him, what was the purpose? What was in his mind when he bought that one? Maybe I'm imagining it is to motivate other sons to say, you also do good things. You also be obedient son like uh, Joseph. Uh, I, I will buy for you also. Maybe he wanted to teach that uh, lesson, but they took it negatively. They developed so much of uh, anger, grudge, and jealousy. Can you imagine among the brothers? They had uh, restlessness. You can read all of that account in Genesis chapter 37 and Genesis 39. And uh, when he went to find the welfare of uh, uh, the 10 brothers, sent by his father with some, maybe some eatables and some provisions for them to cook because they're taking care of the sheep and the goats. And they wanted to now implement that revenge and the anger which was now building up in them, that jealousy. They wanted even to kill, but with the intervention of the other brother they refrained, they cast him into the pit which had no water. Finally, finally, they sold him to the merchants who were on the way to Egypt. And they took him, just sold him for just 20 pieces of silver, that's all. Can you imagine? They beat him, they wanted to kill him, and they took that uh, coat of many colors, they made up a lie, they cooked up a lie, they killed a, 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 a lamb and uh, now dipped that uh, coat of many colors in that blood and uh, took it home and showed it to father and said, we found this coat, maybe some wild animals ate. Is it your son's coat? Surely father identified, he began to cry, cry not one day and uh, days together, months together. Next 20 years he was crying. But these uh, sons 
Nobody said, oh, daddy, we are uh, so sorry. We did, did some mischief. We sold him. Why are you crying? He's, he'll be there somewhere. God will bring him one day back. They did not tell that truth to him. While he was crying also, their heart did not melt. 20 years, he was crying with that thought, my son is no more. One day I will go to my son. That means I am going to die. That's what he was crying. Each time when he remembered his son, Joseph, a very obedient son. So the, it brought so much of restlessness to Jacob and the sons. Each time father was crying for Joseph, they could not tell that mischief what they did. They could not tell him the truth. He may be alive somewhere. We sold him. They did not. So I can imagine how much of a, now restlessness even the brothers felt each time when father remembered Joseph and crying. Could not tell the truth and did not have the rest. What about, uh, my, what about you, my brother? What about you, my sister? Maybe you told some lie. And you know that is a lie, but you are not able to tell the truth for years together. That is bothering you. That is really now keeping you restless. What is that thought? What is that something which you did is uh, making you restless? Because you have done something to your own family member, something wrong, something bad. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And uh, when uh, Joseph was sold, and he was sold in a slave market, it was a custom in those days to sell people as slaves in a slave market. He was bought by Fotifa. He was the commander of uh, King's security, which we call today King's bodyguards. He was the head or he was the in charge. But Joseph did not lose his faith in spite of the problem which he was facing. He did not give up his faith. Often, when uh, we face problem, we question God. There are many people who leave the faith who may develop atheistic views, going far away from God. But Joseph did not do that. He clung to God by faith. He held on to God by faith. He did not give up. So what he, the faith, what he learned from his father, that became a blessing for him. And he continued to grow in faith, though he was the, working with a, a heathen boss. But because of Joseph's faithfulness, God blessed not only Joseph, God blessed his boss and his entire property and entire house. God blessed him. And the heathen man recognized from that time, this young man stepped into my house as a servant. I am blessed with everything, good health, prosperity, good crops in my land, he recognized. So he gave everything into the hands of this person who was a stranger, not his religion, not his language, not his uh, uh, people, or not Egyptian, yet he recognized. Let us learn a spiritual lesson. If you remain faithful to God, because of your faithfulness, God will bless your family. God will bless your workplace. God will bless that school where you work. God will bless that uh, company where you work. God will bless that uh, business where you are working. God will bless because of you. The heathen people will recognize the hand of God is with you. But often we compromise with the heathen. That's why we don't live up to the standard which God has given us. That's a problem. So Joseph faced yet another test of his faith, another now crisis in his life when Photipus' own wife tempted him to commit adultery with her. 
and he ran away, Bible says. You can read that in uh, Genesis chapter 39. I want to ask you, my brother, my sister, are you also facing some temptation? This is not a sudden one day temptation. Day after day, she began to tempt him. Day after day. So it is a, an ongoing temptation, a sexual temptation. Do you also face or are you also facing in your workplace or uh, with your neighbor or uh, uh, wherever you are moving with someone other than uh, your uh, life partner? Are you facing that temptation? And we have to learn that lesson, important spiritual lesson. Joseph ran away. Had he stayed a little longer, lingered around, she would have uh, now pulled him into that sin of adultery. He ran away. That's why we need to learn, my brothers and sisters, this important spiritual truth. Run away from adultery. Because Satan is using people as his agent. Satan used the wife of Potiphar uh, to seduce Joseph so that Joseph would not receive the blessings of God. Satan is trying to tempt each one of us through this sexual sin, if possible, to seduce us, to pull us away from the path of God and pull you into the hellfire. He doesn't want us to go to heaven. That's why Satan is bringing, or any other temptation with money, or some stealing. Satan is using several, several methods to bring restlessness into our lives, into our, our families. So, there was so much of a problem. But we know he was faithful. That's why Though he did not do any wrongdoing, innocent person, they cast him into the prison because uh, to preserve the honor of the family of Potiphar. That was uh, his family honor. If people come to know what happened, and uh, that will be dishonor. That's why innocent person was cast into the prison, though probably Fortifor recognized that Joseph was not at fault. And had he uh, suspected some kind of wrongdoing on the part of this young man, being the head of the security, uh, like security ring uh, for the king, for the, uh, Pharaoh, and Fortifor would have killed him. Because those days, being a foreigner, there is no law, there is no uh, court which could question Fotifa because he was in the highest position, the head of king's security. Fotifa uh, was the head of uh, the security guards for the king's protection. So he had so much of favor with the king. Had he killed, there would not have been any inquiry or any criminal case on him. But he did not do it because he knew in his uh, heart the wrongdoing was not with Potiphar. But uh, wrongdoing was not with Joseph. Potiphar realized that. But uh, whatever, innocent person landed in the prison. But there also, he remained faithful, Joseph. So he won the favor of the head of the prison. And he had free access to everything. All the criminals who were uh, now put into the prison. And Joseph was given in charge. Though he himself was supposed to be a, now serving the prison sentence. But being a prison, uh, pr in the prison, he was uh, uh, in uh, reality, he was uh, managing the whole prison. See how God showed his favor, though he was in the tough time. We have to learn that important lesson. If we remain faithful to God, even the most toughest time or the most uh, now critical time in your life, still God will show his grace and mercy. Even in the prison, because of his faith, because of his uh, connection with God, he had rest. 
he did not uh, have that uh, restlessness he was at peace even in the prison then what did god do all of us know god straight away took him from the prison to prime minister's position only next to the pha uh, pharaoh next to the king can you imagine that i know god can bless then when the famine time came when jacob heard that there is corn in egypt he sent his 10 sons when they came joseph recognized them but they could not recognize joseph 20 years now down the line when they sold him just he was only 17 years old a uh, young man 17 years a teenager and now is 37 grown up and also in the prime minister clothing and they could not recognize and uh, when he just wanted to test them and say maybe you are spies we are going to arrest you then they were talking among themselves you can read that in uh, uh, genesis 44 and 45 they were talking among themselves in fact from uh, 42 onwards genesis 41 42 and on you can read uh, chapters when you have time they were talking among themselves saying what after 20 years see that day when we sold that young man our brother he was pleading he was crying pleading with us not to harm him not to sell him we did not pay any attention see now that punishment is on us now which means 20 years after the event still they had that guilt feeling they didn't have they did not have any peace they did not have any rest because of that wrong doing what they did still they were thinking that oh because of that wrong doing what we did by uh, troubling our brother selling our brother now we are facing this problem they were talking they did not realize that uh, the one who is in front of them was their brother he they they thought only ah, this egyptian he doesn't know our language our mother tongue they were talking freely not knowing that is their uh, own brother he also knows their language they did not know but the guilt feeling was there that's why i want to tell you my brothers and uh, sisters in christ do you have any guilt feeling because of your your uh, now dysfunctional family or uh, what we can call uh, a family which has uh, no bond of uh, god's love because of that some misunderstanding some disunity i know there are two brothers own sisters own brothers they talk they don't talk to each other they may live in the same village in the small villages but they don't talk to each other because they have dispute for uh, dividing the land which belong to the father or sisters don't talk to each other because they had some dispute of uh, dividing or sharing that uh, uh, some gold chain or gold uh, ornaments which belong to the mother after her death uh, they have that kind of uh, disunity i know th- there is so much of uh, restlessness in the families because satan brought so much of a uh, problem in the family relationships the divorce and often we read in the newspapers or sometimes on the tv news a brother kills another brother because of property uh, sharing because of their property yes there is so much of a discard disunity in the family what can bind us together is that love of god joseph had that that's why when their brothers came and after testing them and he opened up himself and said i am your brother joseph whom you sold then by that time already they may be having a kind of a mild heart attack finish for us is going to kill us but he said it is god who sent me before to save you and all of our families during this famine god sent me here to be a blessing for you can you imagine a forgiving person he did not take any revenge on any brother or all the brothers he forgave because he had the love of god agape love in him do you also have if we have that kind of agape love in our life 
then whatever the difference is what we have in our family relationships with our brothers, with our sisters or with wife or with husband or with children. Often these are the uh, supposed to be very close and uh, now inseparable relationships, family ties. But because of sin and Satan is exploiting all of this, so families are disintegrating. There is no uh, agape love, there is no God's love which is binding the families. But that's why finding rest in the family ties. How can we find? Only through the agape love. That's why we can imagine, we can imagine. I know uh, there are uh, uh, good uh, relationships or good examples of uh, families. For example, let us say that uh, Aaron and Moses had nice relationship, a loving relationship. But there was a time again in uh, Numbers chapter 12 and uh, Moses' own sister, eldest sister, that is the only sister, uh, Miriam and Aaron, they plotted something. They started some kind of... Uh, now, some kind of a discard because Moses married a lady who had black complexion of her skin. She was having dark skin. That's why they did not like. And God uh, taught a lesson and punished for a week that uh, Miriam with uh, leprosy. But surely in family relationship and Moses cried and pleaded with the Lord and the Lord listened to his prayer, intercessory prayer and God healed Miriam from that leprosy. So what do we learn is forgiving attitude and also the agape love. That brings any dysfunctional situation in the family, any disunity, any situation which is separating the family members to be together. Because we are told in Psalm 133, how good it is, how nice it is for the, for the brothers to live in unity. If uh, family members live in unity, brothers and sisters, father and mother and uh, brothers and sisters, if they live in a loving relationship, that brings glory and honor. And people in that village, people in that community would say, see, this is a Christian family, how loving they are, how uh, attached they are to each other. Though they're grown up, though they're married, they, though, though they have their own children, but still they are connected together. I uh, really... It intrigues me. Uh, there are some extended families, which they call in India sometimes joint family. They're heathen people. And uh, they live together. A number of families, they live together. In how many? They're heathen. Sure, there are some hiccups once in a while. There are some uh, misunderstandings. But by and large, they live together. Whatever the father, as long as he lives, the father says something, this must be done. All the grown-up sons, married and having their children, they obey. They listen to the word of the father. So, though they are heathen, they uh, show very, very uh, good exemplary life. And uh, that is many times lacking in the families of uh, all of us as God's people whom we know God, taken baptism and uh, uh, practicing the truth. We are preparing to go to it, heaven, but still we need to develop that character of living together in harmony. That harmony can come only if we are now bound by the love of 
Jesus. And Jesus, while dying on the cross, and he prayed, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. Yes. We need to have that forgiving attitude. As Joseph forgave, so Joseph was a type of Christ in the Old Testament. That's why I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, we need to have this important element of uh, agape love in our family relationship, in our family ties. Then we can find that rest which God wants us. So we can enjoy that rest. When we say rest, it's not just sleeping. It is that peace, that harmony, that unity among the family members. Not only our biological family, immediate family or the a biological family, but our spiritual family, that is the church, that is the fellow believers. We need to have that harmony and that love, that peace with all of them because they're all uh, our own brothers and sisters because in Christ, we are all brothers and sisters. We are going to live together throughout the eternity. If we cannot get along with them on this earth, in the church, in the name of some different language, uh, different economic background, rich and poor, uh, different caste, people are not able to get along. Jesus is coming. We need to go to heaven. If we don't change, if that change doesn't come in us to live in harmony with the oneness because we are all the sons and daughters of Jesus for whom he died, for all of us is coming to take us to heaven so that we, can, uh, uh, we are going to live throughout the eternity with him. But if we show that kind of uh, discrimination within our own biological family because of self selfish interest. Many times, this kind of discords, this kind of uh, disharmony or dysfunctional uh, situation in the family comes because of selfishness. We want to have upper hand. We want to have a little more piece of land uh, when we divide the property of the father. Or we want to have a little bit of that, little more money or little more gold, which father and mother uh, now earned. This is the selfishness. Because of the selfishness, that harmony between the brothers and sisters and the family members and the cousins is totally broken down. That is now bringing dishonor to our Heavenly Father. That's why let us uh, have that love of God or agape love so that we can show on this earth glory and honor through our family relationship. People should say, look at this family. They're Christians. They're so loving, so kind, so gracious. God tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 onwards, saying, live in peace with all people. Yes, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. As his sons and daughters, as his followers, we should also love peace and live in peace. That's why it says, blessed are the peacemakers. That's why in our biological family, immediate family, or in our spiritual family, that is the church community, we should live in peace with everyone. Then it brings unity. It brings harmony. It brings that togetherness. We can grow so that we can find rest in our family ties, biological family as well as spiritual family, that is the church community. May the Lord bless each one of us to overcome all kinds of uh, problems, differences, discriminations, discard, disunity among the family members in various situations of our family ties. Let us overcome all of them in his grace and in his love. As we are told in that memory text, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, leaving 
that error of the wicked people. But by his grace, we should be now filled by his grace and we should be tied in his love so that we can overcome all of these challenges which are bringing uh, so much of restlessness in the families, restlessness, restlessness among the family members. Instead, it should bring rest and peace, harmony and unity. If that is your desire, join with me. Let us pray. And before I pray, I want to appeal to each one of you, examine your relationship with your own family members. Then see if there is anything lacking, if there is any discord, if any disunity, anything uh, which is hindering our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Because we are told, if we cannot love our own brother whom we see, how can we love God who is in heaven? It's not possible. That's why uh, let us make up and uh, now uh, let us uh, overcome any of that weakness, any of that problem in the love of Jesus. If needed, we can ask forgiveness from each other so that we can be together and be prepared for second coming of Jesus. I want to pray for you. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for your loving kindness. We realize as human beings, we are facing a number of challenges in our family relationships with our brothers, with our sisters, with our parents and with our children and with our grandchildren. Yes, Lord, there are so many challenges. Satan is exploiting the family situation to bring dishonor to your name. Lord, help us to forgive each other. Help us to be bound by your agape love and help us to be filled with your grace. Fill us with your grace so that we can bring glory and honor to you through our family ties so that we can find peace and rest in you. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. Bless us and continue to lead us and protect us and uh, take care of us, Lord, because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brothers and sisters. God be with you. Until we meet again in the next lesson, Lesson 7, God be with each one of us. Please share this uh, message and these thoughts with uh, others whom you know so that they can also be blessed. Continue to uphold us in your prayers. Thank you. God bless you.